Hello, this is Salvatore Vinciguerra, and in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you the Tennessee Museum of Aviation located in Sevierville, Tennessee. Travel the off-beaten path and explore the fascinating realm of flight at this hidden treasure near the Great Smoky Mountains National Park in Tennessee. Airworthy warbirds are the foundation of this 50,000 square feet facility. The Tennessee Museum of Aviation is located on the Gatlinburg Pigeon Forge Airport in Sevierville. This unique location helps to bring aviation history to life as vintage aircraft are sometimes seen performing unscheduled flight demonstrations. The museum's collection of military vehicles, aircraft engines, aviation exhibits, trainers, fighters, helicopters, jets, and amphibious aircraft will definitely satisfy the interest of Warbird fans. Now I'm going to be giving you some information about the Tennessee Museum of Aviation. There's a link in the description box that leads you to their website where you can check out ticket information and when they're open and so forth. Now I am visiting the Tennessee Museum of Aviation during the summer and I thought that by visiting this after a long day of hiking, it would be a refreshing experience and it would be air conditioned and it would be a, a wonderful experience. However, even though these exhibits are quite interesting to walk through the field exhibits and then the hangar and to get to look at everything and you want to spend time looking at all of the different artifacts that they have here, some of it is not all air conditioned. This particular area where the field exhibits are located is air conditioned, but unfortunately the hangar is not. And the hangar can get quite warm in there if you're visiting on a hot summer day. So I would highly suggest that you either try to visit the museum early in the day when it's cooler or later in the afternoon or during a cooler time of the year on the day that I visited the museum, I first started in this air conditioned area of the museum and then I went inside of the hangar when the hangar became unbearable. After looking at some of the artifacts, then I came back into this air conditioned area, spent a few more minutes, cooled off, and then went back into the hangar and just rotated back and forth again. And that's another option that you can do. Aviation museums such as this are quite rare. There's maybe only two or three in each state and it's just such a different variety of a museum that you can get to see in this area of Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg compared to all the other attractions that are out there. This is visiting real history and learning about the history of the United States. A museum such as this can be very overwhelming for some people and that's because you're not just going from exhibit area to exhibit area. You have a room packed full of all of these different artifacts and you have to look carefully and spend your time understanding what the artifacts are. And that's the case with walking through this hangar. You really do have to sit there and take your time and look up and down and they do have these little placards that have some historical information as to what you're looking at. So something that I almost missed out on by walking through this hangar was sitting above this rocket. And yes, that's Evil Knievel's rocket, but hidden right above it is a Wright Brothers 1902 glider. The Wright brothers were pioneers in aviation and they were the first to invent and build the world's first successful motorized operating plane. I certainly did enjoy walking around the museum to discover some of these vintage cars next to the airplanes and it must just be because they kind of do look similar. In the transportation industry, a lot of the items for airplanes and cars 
shared some of the same motoristic and aerodynamic elements. This is the Douglas A1H Skyraider Lieutenant America. The Douglas A1 Skyraider, formerly the AD Skyraider, is an American single-seat attack aircraft that saw service between the late 1940s and early 1980s. The Skyraider had a remarkably long and successful career. It became a piston-powered, propeller-driven anachronism in the jet age and was nicknamed Spod after the French World War I fighter. It was operated by the United States Navy, the United States Marine Corps, and the United States Air Force, and also saw service with the British Royal Navy, the French Air Force, the Republic of Vietnam Air Force, and others. It remained in the United States service until the early 1970s. This is the North American T-28 Trojan. It is a piston-engine military trainer aircraft used by the United States Air Force and the United States Navy beginning in the 1950s. Besides its use as a trainer, the T-28 was successfully employed as a counterinsurgency aircraft, primarily during the Vietnam War. It has continued in civilian use as an aerobotics and warbird performer. This next aircraft is most probably one of my favorites in the museum and that's just because of the graphics and the wacky names that these planes are called. It's a Republic P-47D Thunderbolt, Wicked Wabbit. The Republic P-47 Thunderbolt was a World War II era fighting aircraft produced by the American Aerospace Company Republic Aviation from 1941 through 1945. Its primary armament was 8.50 caliber machine guns, and in the fighter-bomber ground attack role, it could carry 5-inch rockets or a bomb load of 2,500 pounds. When fully loaded, the P-47 weighed up to 8 tons, making it one of the heaviest fighters of the war. The P-47 was designed around the powerful Pratt & Whitney R2800 double wasp engine, which was also used by two U.S. Navy, U.S. Marine Corps fighters, the Grunman F6F Hellcat and the Vought F4U Corsair. The Thunderbolt was effective as a short to medium range escort fighter in high altitude air to air combat and ground attack in both the European and Pacific theaters. The P-47 was one of the main United States Army Air Force's fighters of World War II and also served with other Allied forces, including those of France, the United Kingdom, and the Soviet Union. Mexican and Brazilian squadrons fighting alongside the United States Air Force also flew the P-47. The armored cockpit was relatively roomy and comfortable, and the bubble canopy introduced on the P-47D offered good visibility. A present-day U.S. ground attack aircraft, the Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II, makes its name from the P-47.
This gray aircraft right here is the Lockheed T-33 Shooting Star or T-Bird and it's a subsonic American jet trainer. It was produced by Lockheed and it made its first flight in 1948. It had many different forms over the years and was used by the U.S. Navy and it last operated with the Bolivian Air Force and then retired in 2017 after 44 years of service. This is the Sikorsky H-34 military helicopter originally designed by American aircraft manufacturer Sikorsky as an anti-submarine warfare aircraft for the United States Navy. H-34 served mostly as medium transports on every continent with the armed forces of 25 countries. It saw combat in Algeria, the Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, and throughout Southwest Asia. Other uses included saving flood victims, recovering astronauts, fighting fires, and carrying presidents. It was the last piston-engine helicopter to be operated by the United States Marine Corps, having been replaced by turbine-powered types such as the UH-1 Huey and the CH-46 Sea Knight. A total of 2,108 H-34s were manufactured between 1953 and Behind this Jeep is the Mikoyan Gavarik MiG-21 and it is a supersonic jet fighter and interceptor aircraft. Designed in the Soviet Union, one of its nicknames include the Balaika because its plane form resembles the stringed musical instrument of the same name. Hanging right above is the North American Aviation P-51 Mustang which is an American long-range single-seater fighter and fighter-bomber used during World War II and the Korean War, among many other conflicts.
I hope that you have enjoyed this exploration of the Tennessee Museum of Aviation. Don't forget to check out the description box below where I'm posting a link of the website so that if you wish to visit the Tennessee Museum of Aviation, you can check out specific times and dates where they have different activities going on. Again, this is a wonderful museum for military veterans, people who are wanting to pursue a career in the military, aviation, or even history buffs. This is just such a wonderful learning experience and I hope that you have the opportunity to visit the Tennessee Museum of Aviation as well as the other attractions in the Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and Sevierville area near the Great Smoky Mountain National Park in North Carolina and Tennessee. This is Salvatore Vinciguerra. Thank you for watching this video on the Tennessee Museum of Aviation in Sevierville, Tennessee. If you like this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and have an awesome day. Thank you.